The Islamic belief about heaven and hell is similar to the other monotheistic beliefs in that God will reward those who are good and will punish those who are bad. Then, whoever did even an atom's worth of good shall see it, and whoever commits an atom's worth of evil shall see it. Quran chapter 9 verses 7 through 8. Thus, Muslims believe all people will come before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be judged justly and will have the book of all their deeds brought forth before them. Surely the believers and the Jews and the Christians and the Sabians, whichever party from among these truly believes in Allah and the last day and does good deeds, shall have their reward with their Lord, and no fear shall come upon them, nor shall they grieve. Quran 2.62 the Quran does not sugarcoat the torments of hell, for indeed the hellfire is a means of purging the evildoers of their sins, and there are even scholars that differ in the opinion of hell being truly eternal, or of evildoers spending a certain amount of time in hell, wherein they will ultimately seek forgiveness and be at some point placed in one of the levels of heaven. Some point to a hadith that states, that God displayed only a hundredth part of his mercy in this world and it is only this hundredth part whose manifestation is witnessed in all the creations in this world and that the other 99 parts of his mercy will be displayed in the next life. And in a tradition of Kanzal Umal that states, Verily a day would come over hell when there shall not be a single human being in it. And many more. Since the Arabic language is so rich and deep, one could spend what would seem like a lifetime on researching verses and chapters in the Quran to find the full meaning. There is, however, seven different levels of heaven or Jannah, which will hold various peoples according to their deeds or righteousness. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paints a picture for us of either immense reward and beauty or of immense punishment. Because in everything, there is a special balance to life where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that you not transgress within the balance. Quran 55 verse 8. It would seem as though there are some people who have not received enough punishment on earth for the atrocities that they've committed, but God says, This day every soul will be recompensed for what it earned. No injustice today. Indeed, Allah is swift in account. Quran 40 17. Yet, the Quran reminds in the heading of every chapter that God is the most gracious and the most merciful. And in a hadith that states, My mercy prevails over my wrath. Thus, there's a constant tension in the Quran, a constant push and pull of evil and good, injustice and justice. There's also something for everyone in heaven, the Quran states in 41 verse 31, We, angels, were your allies in worldly life and are so in the hereafter. And you will have therein whatever your soul desires, and you will have therein whatever you request or wish. The Quran reveals beautiful things about heaven in many verses that may be understandable and beautiful for human minds, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises much greater things than the human mind can comprehend in heaven. In the Quran, there are different forces of evil, some being named shaitan or jinns, Shaitan is a term used in a wider sense for any human-like immoral impulse, but also can be linked to terms like devil, demon, jinn, devilish beings, and such, since shaitan can refer to any jinn or demon that does not believe and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iblis is the name of the first shaitan who refused to obey orders from God, and also enticed Adam and Eve to eat the forbidden fruit. When God commanded Iblis to bow down to Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, after creating the first human. In the story, Iblis refuses and is arrogant, arguing that he was created from fire and Adam, peace be upon him, was only created from clay or dust. And the story goes on further about Allah's subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan to have them all go out of paradise and down to the earth to live in chapter or surah 7. Some scholars believe that Iblis used to be an honorable and learned angel, possessors of wings, in which God created to constantly praise, worship, and do as God commands. Yet, most sources claim Iblis was a jinn, made of fire, from which there are jinns that can behave very well or very evil. In chapter 6, verse 112, God states, And thus we have made for every prophet an enemy, devils from mankind and jinn, 
inspiring to one another decorative speech in delusion. But if your Lord had willed, they would have not done it. So leave them and that which they invent. And yet Muslims also believe that shaitan or evil beings have no power over those who are rightly guided. In chapter 15 verses 39 and 40, shaitan promises his duty of trying to make all humanity go astray and not worship God in saying that, I shall misguide them all except your sincere servants. Thus, Muslims are commanded not to delve into dark things like witchcraft, magic, satanic practices such as worshipping devils, and even fortune telling. The jinns, shaitan, and wes wes, or the whisperings of shaitan, are all around us and are constantly trying to get us to do things that are farthest from what God wants, and the Quran says it's our job to overcome these evils, adhere to the straight path, and become strong in our faith so that these evils can only become weaker as we get stronger. Unlike the jinn created from fire, the angels are created from light, and unlike human beings who are given free will, the angels were created to be obedient to God, and they are given special tasks at times that they must carry out, like the angel of death who has tasks of gathering the humans up for the day of judgment or the angels that watch and record all the deeds of every human being. In fact, Muslims believe that there are some angels who only prostrate and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every second. It's worth mentioning that the Quran says that every being, whether it's the sun, the animals, or etc., worships God. Have they not considered what things Allah has created? Their shadows incline to the right and to the left, prostrating to Allah while they are humble. And to Allah prostrates whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth of creatures and the angels as well, and they are not arrogant. In chapter 16 verses 48 and 49. This carries over about the teachings of Islam on how to treat every being with respect, whether it be animals, nature, or humans, because all things have their own communities, their own systems, and their own feelings. I really hope you enjoyed learning about the basic points of Islam, and please stick around for these interesting extras up next. Did you know when Muslims greet each other, they offer greetings of peace that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows from all the way back to the first believers? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be glorious unto you. The Lord lifts up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the Torah, Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be upon you. The Bible, John chapter 20, verse 26. Peace be upon you. Your Lord has decreed upon himself mercy. Quran, Surah Al-An'am 6, verses 54. Muslim women and men have specific rules about clothing, such as men wearing pants that at least go below the knee, or the covering of the body that women wear, signifying their belief in Mary, Jesus' mother, peace be upon her, as a role model and also in chapter 33 verse 59 where it states, Prophet, tell your wives, daughters, and the wives of the believers to cover, bring down or draw their covers close around them, this will make them distinguishable from others and protect them from being annoyed or harassed. God is all-forgiving and all-merciful. Like Judaism, Muslims do not consume pork. Forbidden to you for food are dead meat, blood, the flesh of swine, and that on which hath been invoked the name of other than Allah. Quran 5 verse 3 In some very desperate situations, I have even heard of people saying that cannibalism tasted a lot like pork, but I don't think we'll get into all of that right now. Did you know that Muslims also believe that knowledge is a requirement from God? Are those who have knowledge and those who have no knowledge alike? Only the men of understanding are mindful. Quran 39 verse 9 And they shall say, had we but listened or used reason, we would not be among the inmates of the burning fire. Quran 67 verses 10. In an authentic hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim. 
The word knowledge appears 854 times in the Quran, and other phrases about using reason or thinking deeply appear over 100 times. I hope this has been a very positive experience for you, and maybe you've even learned something new. As we say in Islam, Assalamu Alaikum, peace be upon you.